Hey bookends! Welcome to a 10 minute book review. I'm 10. This week's book review is going to be on Vagrant Queen. Well, let's see if you can see it. You know, I'm gonna have a picture in the corner anyway, but... Vagrant Queen by Magaline Visaggio and illustrated by Jason Smith. Colored by Hank Saxon lettered by Zach Sam. So jumping right on in, we like to start every review with a star point as in out of 10 stars, how many stars is this book on her? And a rating, if this was a movie or a TV show, what would it be rated? Now fortunately this is going to be a TV show on sci-fi so I don't have to try too hard in the ratings department. Uh, the content would make it more like a PG, PG-13. The language would kind of drive it to an R, but we'll discuss that. And as a star point, this is a solid five. And it's sad because I liked the plot of this book. I really did. So why would we give a book that we kind of liked such a low mark, such a middle of the road mark? Let's find out. So the book starts off with Elidia, I believe her name is pronounced. Elidia. So, well, I should say the comic starts off. And so I, I'm saying that it starts off with Elidia, but actually it starts off with this weird space battle that I'm not 100% sure what the purpose of it was. Maybe in the next comics it will elaborate on it. Um, but then we go to Elidia, who is the main character. She's having a heated discussion with a penguin, an alien that looks like a penguin to me, and an alien that looks like an overgrown chick, like a chick on steroids. When I say chick, I don't mean woman, I mean like a chick, like a chicken chick on steroids. So one looks like a penguin in a metal hazmat suit, and like a steampunk hazmat suit, and the other one just looks like if a chick and Johnny Bravo were merged. A brick? Bravo and chick? Brick? Anyway. So she's having this argument with them about she got some stuff for him, most likely illegally, and he's like, nah, bro, I ain't paying for it. I'm keeping it, but I ain't paying for it because it ain't that great. And she's like, dude, I did what you told me to and I got what you wanted. And he's like, well, if I followed up on all of my deals with well, what I was going to do, I wouldn't be rich. So because she's, I guess, strong or sassy or what have you, she ends up fighting him. I think she kills Brick. I don't, that's not his real name, but Johnny Bravo Chick. He, she kills Johnny Bravo Chick and I guess she injures the penguin in the metal suit. We fast forward to a bar and she's talking to a robot who happens to be the bartender and she meets some dude that she used to know who apparently shot her before. And he's like, hey, I can help you find your mom. And she's like, okay, well, what we doing? And some other stuff ends up happening after that. You can see that there's not a lot going on. I don't have, I have no idea why this book isn't a graphic, well, I should say this comic. I have no idea why this comic isn't a graphic novel or an actual novel because there's just not enough of it in the first issue to make someone say wow I want to get the next one there didn't there wasn't enough to make me feel invested in it to want to find out what happens next now because there is a TV show for sci-fi coming out in a few months maybe the end of this month not sure I know that Elidia is supposed to be the princess of a kingdom where the mother was killed or removed or ran away or, or something. Somehow the mother was uh, removed and so the daughter who is the rightful heir has been running around pirating ever since and now she wants to go back to her kingdom I guess and do stuff. You can tell how vague everything is in regards to this. The premise sounds good. The premise sounds really good. So before we get into the stuff that brought it down, 
I want to tell you about the stuff that uh, I liked about it. So Elidia is a black woman. She is very obviously a black woman. Sometimes when uh, black people, especially black women, uh, strong black women especially, are portrayed in books or uh, novels, television shows, comics, they're made to look racially ambiguous. So perhaps if someone was my skin color but with straight hair, you might not know if the person was African American or Dominican or uh, dark skinned Indian, depending on how the hair looks, or perhaps a Native American mixed with something else. Like, you wouldn't be able to tell because they're made to look racially ambiguous. And so it's like, if you're going to give me a black character, then give me a black character. Black people come in different shades, of course, so different shading is fine but give me something that shows blackness and her shading is deep and it's also living what i mean by that is sometimes when people do comics uh they make black people just the color of a, a brown crayon which isn't the color of black people's it i guess it's hard to describe if you're not a black person or a person from uh background where there's a lot of brown people then you may not understand this but when people color us in generally they do a well we only had this color in the box kind of deal well like it's brown right so yeah so they did a really good job at coloring her in and giving her flesh tones so she looks like a black person also i love her hair her hair is kinky curly uh, so that makes perfect sense because of course if this is a world or a uh, universe where earth doesn't exist even though humans exist earth doesn't then there would be no European influence European influence saying that straight hair is the way to go therefore it would be assumed that whatever was growing out of the person's head whether it be hair or spikes or tentacles whatever it is growing out of their hair out of their head You'll be allowed to manifest naturally and in styled instead of relaxed to conform to a hierarchy that doesn't exist so basically what i'm saying is the character looks very black which is refreshing she has black features she has black hair her skin color is on point she's very black the plot is in even though i didn't gather the plot for the series from the actual comic the plot itself it sounds very interesting for those who wish to continue on. I just wish I had gotten more from this. I have absolutely no plans whatsoever continuing on with this series. So you're not going to find another, you know, Vagrant Queen 2. No, we're not doing that. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, but for those who would be interested, uh, the plot does sound interesting. If only it could have been well executed and the fur at least further executed further executed in the first book uh also too the artwork in the book is beautiful most of it is well saturated well drawn i shouldn't say beautiful because it's not meant to be beautiful i'll say that it's well drawn and it's well saturated you can pretty much tell what is being drawn because it's well defined let's get into the bad there is a lot of gratuitous cursing in this. When I say gratuitous, like sometimes if you read, you're reading a book and someone will stub their toe and they'll say some expelliative because they stub their toe. That makes sense. It makes sense that you're going to say something in the throes of pain. What irritates me is that when it comes to African American characters, people just assume that every African American or every tough African-American has a potty mouth. Like we just curse all the time. We just say good effing morning. And someone says good SH morning to you too. And mind you, that sounds silly, right? That doesn't make any sense. It sounds like it's not placed well. The words aren't placed well. That's exactly what happened in this book. A little comic. I feel as though the actual writer wrote the book, the comic, and then maybe a content editor went over it and said, oh, oh, 
Well, Lydia doesn't sound black enough. Let's add some curses in so people will know she's a Negro. Let me see if I can find an example. Let me just see if I can find an example really quick. Okay, so she just walks. Okay, so she's finished um, fighting some people. And she walks into the bar and she's talking to the robot dude. And she's like, hook me the H up, Chaz. And it's just, just random, just random stuff. And it's just randomly placed and peppered throughout the book. And I'm like, why? Who told you we wanted this? Why? It doesn't add anything. It doesn't make the character seem any tougher or stronger. It just makes it seem as though she doesn't know how to use adjectives. Like she is all out of the other adjectives. So she just has four she knows how to use. Secondly, I, this is a personal pet peeve of mine. This doesn't have anything to do with the content. It's just a personal pet peeve. Whenever there is a, Af I shouldn't say whenever, a lot of times when there is an African American woman portrayed as strong and tough and no nonsense and not taking anything from anyone ever, she is drawn with masculine features and they make her look more male than female. And that irritates my soul because when there are women of other nationalities, if you see a white woman drawn in a comic who is no nonsense, she'll still look feminine. And I don't mean like breasts out, hips out, butt out. I don't mean all that because that's not feminine. That's sexualized. And I'm very happy that this cut, this character has not been sexualized. But they basically drew her in a way that made her look like a man with lipstick on. And I find that happens a lot when it comes to African American heroes, when it comes to comics. Uh, it, won't ha it won't happen always, but especially if the person who is being depicted is uh, more highly pigmented. Like the darker the woman looks, the more masculine her appearance has to be the harder her features have to be. Like there are no dark skinned women with soft features. It, it doesn't make any sense. I heard one person uh, say that it looks more realistic to give a darker skinned character harder features so that the features can be seen more readily. That doesn't make any sense. If you are an artist and you should know how to create depth that's like saying, you know, well, since this person is a black person and I'm a writer, the only way I can describe their color is by using different foods. She was mocha brown. She had juicy lips. Like, I just, I, since she's a black person, I can only describe her by using adjectives that would be found in food. Like chocolate, caramel, juicy, thick. Yeah. So that irritated my soul a bit because how she was drawn it, once again it made her look like just because she's a dark-skinned woman she must appear in some way masculine uh, there's nothing wrong with a woman appearing masculine but I feel as though this is a trait that is attributed to darker skin black women especially if they're made to mirror African-American women it's like we're being told that a dark-skinned woman cannot be strong and beautiful at the same time. Not sexualized, but strong and beautiful. If she is strong, then she by default must have some man in her. If she is strong, by default she must have heart features, which is not true. Like if you look through the book, you see, or through the comic, because I have it on Kindle. So if you look through the comic, you see there are other women shown and they are lighter pigmented. They could be white, they could just be lighter pigmented but their features are softer but the dark skinned woman the one dark skinned woman in the entire book has to have these sharp masculine almost man like features uh the other point that i was going to bring out is that it breaks in my mind it breaks the third wall not the fourth wall because they're not talking to us but the third wall as in it brings up content that shouldn't exist in this world but exists in our world to bring us into it so to give you an example of that, uh, the dude she's talking to says something 
And she's like, Jesus Christ. They're in space. There is no earth. Which means that there is no Lord and Savior who died for our sins. Why would she say Jesus Christ? Where would she learn Jesus Christ from? There's no earth. So it would it made no sense. It was it was an exclamation just used to try to bring the reader in, but then it ends up it ends up alienated than the reader because it's like, wait a minute. How you know Jesus? How? We not even talk about the Milky Way. You're not even our system. How do you know him? That would be like if on Star Wars they mention President Barack Obama. How would Luke Skywalker know President Obama if Earth don't exist? Now it would make sense if it was mentioned on Star Trek, which is supposed to be the, you know, just the future of our timeline. But in a world where ourselves, Earth, the Milky Way, our system doesn't exist. Everything is made up. Where would Jesus Christ come from? That was just one example of things that were used that, in my opinion, were to bring the reader. It was kind of a way to say, hey, 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 like a, you know what I'm talking about. And as the reader, it's like, no, I do not know what you're talking about. How does this queen know Jesus? So. Yes, those were the things that that brought it down. Um, the peppering of cursing. I, I'm saying peppering. But it's almost like if someone put pepper in your eggs, it's like, oh, okay, well, that's not bad. But then they just dump pepper on your eggs. It's like, oh, great. Now I can't eat it. So that's what it was like, basically, someone dumping pepper on your eggs. Like, you, you're still going to eat this, though, right? Like, yeah, I'm going to eat it. I'm hungry, but I ain't going to like it. So, yeah, the, the cursing, uh, my personal pet peeve of how the character was made to look hyper-masculine. She looked more like the dudes in the book than the women in the book, even though there were other women in the book, but she was the only dark-skinned woman in the book, and everyone else, all the other women, had softer features, and she was made to look like, yeah, I'm tough. I'm a man. Um, and then breaking the third wall, trying to get the reader to come along when we're already there like we're already with you you don't need to bring us along we're right there with you if we weren't there with you we wouldn't be re like how could we read the line if we weren't there with you it's like saying i'm trying to get a husband and so you know you play hard to get to get a husband i'm already married so i'm gonna play hard with my husband to get a husband no i already got the man so what i need to play hard to get for he already here so when it comes to the book, it's the same premise. Why do you need to, to bring us into this if we're already here? Don't bring us in. Just keep talking. Keep writing. Keep telling us the story. Don't bring me in. I'm already here. The door is open. I'm sitting down. I'm on the couch. I'm listening. Just, just keep going. So, yes. This has been a review for The Vagrant Queen. Uh, don't recommend it. But I will be checking in for the TV show. You know, the first episode. Because it looks good. Uh, Sometimes they ruin the, the book, but they do a good job on the show. So, it's, you know, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. We are going to try it. But for the actual novelization, or I should say the comic book, it's a no. It's a pass. It's a no. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. Bye, bookends.